ادع الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادله بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته brothers and sisters in Islam welcome to another nightly lecture in which we are going over the introductory sciences to the understanding of the tafsir of the noble Quran al-Karim in some of our previous talks, I think uh, our last talk, we discussed the compilation of the Qur'an and a little bit about the differences between Meccan surahs and Medani surahs and how to distinguish between the two, how to recognize um, some of the signs of Meccan surahs and Medani surahs and also what are some of the themes and topics in each of the specific surahs, Meccan surahs, those revealed before the Hijra and Medani surahs and verses those revealed after the Hijra. And the more the servant gains an understanding of the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal, the better they can understand what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from the slave. And from the mercy of Allah upon the Muslims is that He clarified for us everything that will benefit us in this world and the next. And clarified for us how to maintain and preserve those beneficial things. Allah also clarified for us what to do and how to resist enemies from amongst humans, animals, and jinn. Also from Allah's mercy upon us is that He taught us a way to protect ourselves from our biggest enemy, which is Iblis. Shaytan, Satan. Allah taught us how we can protect ourselves, our wealth, as well as our families from Iblis and his evil agents who cause mischief and corruption in the lands. Allah Azza wa Jal, he taught us in numerous verses in the Quran about how to seek refuge in him from the accursed Iblis and Shaytan. Allah mentions in Surah Al-A'raf وَإِمَّا يَنْزَغَنَّكَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ نَزْغٌ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah he mentions in verse number 120 of Surah Al-A'raf teaching us how to seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaytan. Allah he says and if an evil suggestion or whispering comes to you from shaytan from Satan, then seek refuge in Allah, and indeed Allah is all hearing, all known. And Allah mentions in another beautiful verse in Surah Al Mukminun, verses number 96 through 98. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ هَمَزَاتِ الشَّيَاطِينِ وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ Rabbi an yahdarun. Try the best of what you can to repel their evil, the evil of the shayateen from amongst ints and jinn. We are most knowing of what they describe and say and supplicate and invoke. O oh my Lord, I seek refuge in you from the incitements of the shayateen, the devils, and I seek refuge in you, my Lord, lest that they should come close to me or be present with me. So in order for us to repel the whisperings of shaitan and his agents from amongst the humans and jinn, 
a way that we can repel them and keep them away from us. And to keep them away from distracting us from reciting, reading, and pondering over the Quran, we have been taught to practice what we call al isti'adha, to seek refuge in Allah from the whisperings of shaitan. Before the recitation of the Quran, as Allah He mentions in Surah An Nahl, verses number 98 through 100. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ إِنَّمَا سُلْطَانُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يَتَوَلَّ So when you recite the Qur'an, first seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, the one who was expelled from Allah's mercy. Indeed, there is for him no authority over those who have believed and rely upon their Lord. His authority is only over those who take him as an ally and those who through him associate others with Allah. So seeking refuge in Allah in the beginning of the prayer as well as during the prayer to repel shaitan and his whisperings is also recommended as it came in an authentic hadith narrated by Uthman ibn Abil As al thaqafi who said to Allah's Messenger, He said, Shaitan disturbs me in my prayer and distracts me in my recitation of the Quran. Thereupon Allah's Messenger وسلم, responded to him, He said, That is the actions of Shaitan, a devil who is known as Khinzab. And when you become distracted by him or his whispers, seek refuge with Allah from him by blowing or spitting lightly three times to your left side, then Uthman, he says, I did that and Allah dispelled the shaitan and his whispers from me. So what is al-isti'adha? What is al-isti'adha? Seeking refuge in Allah. Al-isti'adha, brothers and sisters, is something recommended or something that we would consider sunnah. Or mustahab to do when we begin to recite the Quran based on Allah's command in the verse that we previously read, fasta'ith, fasta'ith, which comes in the imperative form, which is a command from Allah Azza wa Jal. And the majority of the scholars view that seeking refuge in Allah from Shaitan is highly recommended, but it is not obligatory. However, it has been narrated from one of the great tabi'een, Ata ibn Abi Rabah, that it can be considered obligatory based upon the literal command in the word, fasta'ith, as we mentioned, is the imperative form, the command form. And al isti'adha is to say in Arabic, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim or to say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ So linguistically, the word أَعُوذُ أَعُوذُ Hamza, عَيْن وَاو ذَال أَعُوذُ The word أَعُوذُ means to hold firmly on to something while seeking refuge and protection in something from anything harmful. So let's break this down. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim So billahi, okay, we know that Allah, billah, Allah is the name of the one and only creator of the universe and everything in it. The one who can only be described with perfect and complete attributes and traits while being free from all deficiencies and defects. The Muslim is taught to seek refuge in the one who provides complete and perfect protection. That is Allah Azza wa Jal alone. As-Sami' As-Sami' means the all-hearing and is one of Allah's beautiful names. Allah Azza wa Jal, the Most High, hears every sound, no matter how discreet it is. Even the heartbeats of humans, animals, 
fish, insects, and all creatures. Al-Alim, the all-knowing. This is also from Allah's beautiful names as well. Allah knows everything in the creation. So, if somebody chose to say, أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم what is the goal or what is the benefit of mentioning both of Allah's names, the all-hearing and the all-knowing together? First and foremost, to express part of the Muslim's creed about Allah that necessitate that one constantly seeks refuge in Him and that Allah is all-hearing of the supplication of the one supplicating and He is all-knowing of the one Supplicating's need And Who he is seeking protection from Also Praise of Allah And glorification of him Similarly Seeking Allah's kindness and mercy So that Allah will protect his servant From the evil from all directions While rewarding the one supplicating For his true faith in him Min shaitan A'udhu billahi Min shaitan Shaitan is the name of every disobedient, misguided, corrupter, rebelling creature from amongst the jinn as well as mankind. Iblis is the leader of the shayateen and their master. Anyone who orders someone to disobey Allah can be considered a shaitan as well. In Arabic, the word shaitan comes from the root Shatana, Sheen, Ta, Noon, which can mean either to repel something or push it away, or a rope that one uses to pull a bucket of water from the well. Actually, every rope can actually be called Shatanan or Shatnun. So when Shaitan is one who misguides, rebels, disobeys, and corrupts others, while being completely against the truth, goodness, and guidance, while trying to lead others away from it, he, the shaitan, has ropes that he uses to pull the people away from correct guidance. And this is one reason why some of the scholars of Arabic language and tafsir have mentioned that they are called shaitan or shayateen. Ar-Rajim, what is the meaning of Ar-Rajim? Ar-Rajim means to be rejected, abandoned, expelled, pushed away, or cursed. It is taken from the word Ar-Rajim. Ra-Jim Mim. Which means that which one uses to throw at something, such as rocks or the likes. So when Iblis the head of the shayateen disobeyed his lord and creator and insisted on sinning and rejecting obedience to Allah, Allah expelled him and cursed him from being within the presence of the other creatures in the heavens, the angels, and made him infinitely cursed and repelled. Also, whoever takes Iblis as a leader for themselves and misleads and misguides others is also an accursed shaitan as well. So Allah has advised us to always seek refuge in Him, the all-hearing, the all-seeing from shaitan, whenever the shaitan's whisperings come to us. These whisperings come to us as evil thoughts, temptations, and desires that take us away from obedience to Allah. Allah informed us in many verses in the Qur'an that shaitan is our clear enemy, so the believer is in constant need to seek refuge in Allah from him. We can see and sense enemies from humankind, but we cannot always sense the enemies from the jinn and the shayateen and the humans from amongst them. So what is the ruling of saying, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ rajim? What is the ruling of al-isti'adha before recitation of the Qur'an in our prayer. The Shafi'i and the Hanbali scholars consider reciting al-isti'adha silently in the prayer before recitation of the Qur'an in every rak'ah to be sunnah, 
to be mustahab or recommended. The Hanafi scholars consider the recitation of it to be sunnah, desired or recommended only in the beginning of the first rak'ah of the prayer. The Maliki scholars consider it to be makru, disliked, to recite al-isti'adha and bismillah before Surah Al-Fatiha and the Surah recited after it based on the Hadith which comes in Sahih Muslim on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that Qatada informed him that Anas ibn Malik narrated to him. He said, I observed prayer behind the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman. When they recited their loud recitation, their oral recitation out loud in the prayers which the Quran is recited orally, verbally, so everybody can hear, he said they started with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And they did not recite Bismillah Rahman Rahim loudly at the beginning of the recitation or at the end of it. So that brings us to our next topic related to recitation of the Quran in the prayer. The Basmala. The Basmala. The Basmala. The word Basmala is contrived or made up of the statement Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim which means in the name of Allah the most merciful the bestower of mercy. And the Basmala is actually a verse Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the 30th verse of Surah An-Naml. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we find it in the Qur'an, in Surah An-Naml, the chapter about the ants, or entitled the ants, verse number 30. And the scholars differed as to whether or not Bismillah, if the Basmala or Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, is actually a part of Surah Al-Fatiha or not. They also differed in regards to whether or not it is a part of the beginning of every surah of the Qur'an as well, except for surah At-Tawbah. Or is the basmala placed in the beginning of every surah to indicate the beginning of a new surah? The Shafi'i scholars, as well as the famous reciters, the Qurra of Mecca and Al-Kufa, and their jurisprudence scholars, as well as Abdullah ibn Mubarak, they said that the Basmala is part of the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha, as well as the remaining surahs of the Qur'an, except for Surah At-Tawbah. And to me, this seems to be the strongest opinion. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. And their view is based upon, first and foremost, that it is written before the beginning of every surah, except Surah At-Tawbah, in the Uthmani Mus'haf that was compiled and written in the time of Uthman. And the copies of that Mus'haf were sent to the different countries afterwards and were found with the Basmalah written in them. <clears throat> also, Anas ibn Malik, when he asked, he said, how was the recitation of the Qur'an of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam?" And he replied, it was characterized by the prolongation of certain sounds. He then recited in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, prolonging the pronunciation of in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. So he would prolongate Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Imam Ahmad and Abu Thawr view that it is only a verse from Surah Al-Fatiha because of the clarity of the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, as for Imam Malik and Imam Al Awza'i and some of the famous reciters, the Qurra of Al Madina and Al Basra and Sham, they viewed that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not a verse from Surah Al Fatiha, nor any other surah, and their view is based upon 
first and foremost, a lack of evidence. There's no tawatr. Okay, there's no successively large groups of companions narrating it to a successively large group of tabi'een. About the bismillah being in the beginning of the surahs. And the text of the Qur'an is only established via mutawatir texts. And we don't find anything mentioned from Imam Abu Hanifa about this topic, except that his opinion that states one should not recite it audibly with Surah Al-Fatiha in the audible prayers. And he disliked it being recited before the recitation of two surahs, after the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha in the first two raka'at. <coughs> so now, <coughs> after we've learned the meaning of A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, talked a little bit about the ruling of Basmalah, what is the meaning of the Basmalah? What is the meaning of Allah's statement, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy? This is a statement that Allah taught us to say before reciting Quran. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam taught us to say it before starting any good deed or action. So, Bismi, Bismi means in the name, meaning and it depends on the pronunciation, okay? And it depends upon one pronouncing Bismillah. So if he is opening his, his recitation or reading, then it can mean one of four things. If somebody says Bismillah, it can mean I recite in the name of Allah. Or it can mean in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, I recite. Or it can mean, my recitation is in the name of Allah. Or it can mean, in the name of Allah is my recitation. So the most eloquent of these possibilities, in my opinion, is either in the name of Allah I recite, or in the name of Allah is my recitation. And this is because when the object precedes the verb in Arabic, it is used to show restriction. And restricting our recitation or actions to the aid and assistance of Allah alone is the most important thing for the believer. This is because if we translated the ba to mean assistance or aid, then the believer only seeks aid in Allah. If we translated the ba to mean with or next to, then the believer should only seek to be with Allah and his attributes of his closeness, comfort, and protection. And the word Allah, as we know, is the Arabic name for the only creator and Lord of all creatures, the one who is described with all attributes of perfection, the one who is free from all defects and deficiencies. So why did Allah tell us to say Bismillah and not Billah? Why don't we recite Billah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? And we are advised and ordered to recite Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah taught us to say Bismillah and not Billah to teach us that the capacity of our intellects is weak. And our intellectual comprehension and understanding about Allah's essence is deficient. And that we should not think or ask questions about Allah's essence. Rather, we should think and ponder over His beautiful names and attributes. As for what we can comprehend, then this is restricted to Allah's names and attributes about which He tells us about in the Qur'an and the Prophet Muhammad wasallam tells us about in the authentic Sunnah. And the only way to understand Allah's essence, names, and attributes is through what He informed us about in the Qur'an and in the authentic Sunnah. So, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahman can be translated to mean the most merciful, which is one of Allah's beautiful names, which means the one who contains the most mercy in the universe. Ar-Rahman, in the definite form, can only be used to describe Allah alone. 
Nothing or no one from amongst the creation can be described with this name in the definite form, meaning with the alif lam um, preceding the beginning of the word. And the meaning rahma, rahma, mercy, within the creation is compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. However, this meaning does not befit Allah Azza wa Jalla the Most High. And Allah's traits and characteristics are never to be compared with those of the creation. Allah's attribute of mercy contains generosity and bestowment upon all of the creation. What is the meaning of Ar-Rahim? Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahim, the bestower of mercy, which is also one of Allah's beautiful names which is taken from the same root word, Rahma, And it means one who contains infinite mercy and bestows it upon others. So Allah's two names, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim, were both mentioned in the beginning of Surah Al-Fatiha and in the beginnings of all of the surahs were advised to recite it for a few reasons. First and foremost, emphasizing praise of Allah with His beautiful traits of mercy. Also, seeking assistance and hoping for Allah's bestowment of mercy upon us. Also, focusing on the comprehensiveness of Allah's mercy upon His obedient slaves in this world and the next. And it has been mentioned that Ar-Rahman is used majority of the time to express Allah's comprehensive mercy upon all creatures in this world. And Ar-Rahim is used majority of the time to express Allah's special mercy for believers in the hereafter. Most of the verses in the Quran that mention Allah's name Ar-Rahman by itself or joined with Allah's name Ar-Rahim point to the affairs related to His mercy for the believers in this world in all the affairs they will experience up until entering paradise. As for the verses that mention Allah's mercy upon the obedient servants in paradise, then we find that Allah's name, Ar-Rahim, is only used. This is proof that Allah is merciful with all of the creation up until everyone enters their final abodes, then He is more merciful with those who enter the paradise. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. So, so far we've taken what will establish for us a good foundation of the meaning of al istiada the meaning of the Basmillah, so that now we can start diving into some of these surahs and extracting some of their beautiful and eloquent meanings. So in our next discussion, we're going to start getting into the first surah that was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which was Surah Al-Alaq, the surah, the clot, the clot, which is the ninety-sixth surah in the Quran, and it is a Meccan surah. So in our next lecture, we're going to start on the tafsir and the explanation and the exegesis of this wonderful surah. So until next time, stay tuned and follow up and subscribe and like the lectures if they are beneficial for you and share them with others to keep the reward going for all of us. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.